What's going on guys, Real Thoughts GML here back with another Java tutorial and as requested I'm going to start making these tutorials a little bit longer now. So instead of just teaching you one concept per video, I'm actually going to be going in and showing you how to do this and then giving you examples for that. So today I want to show you how to actually input your own your own messages into the console. Instead of just printing something out, you're actually going to have input, be able to type like your name or something and we're going to be able to display that and all that. So basically, we're going to be using a scanner for this, okay? Now this is, uh, the location of the scanner is in the Java runtime environment, and as you can see, we have all these sources here. If you open this up, you get all these packages, and this, these here actually contain your, like, all of these stuff, all of the stuff in Java that you can use. So basically, scanner is one of them. It's somewhere in here, but scanner is one of them. So we're going to initialize a scanner and it is an object just like we would a variable so if we say int x uh, that is obviously an integer and its name is x well we we say scanner where we create scanner the same way so I say scanner sc we'll just name it sc and as you can see we get an error here and it, there's a red line and this is if you're using Eclipse and you can hover over it and click import or you can just do control shift o if you're on Windows and that will that will import it for you uh, by itself but now that we have this and we've kind of initialized it just like we would an integer or a double you're not actually done because if we try to use SC um, I haven't taught you this yet just let me let me do that so if we do that actually we get an error here and if you hover over it, it says initialize variable so basically the, we've made the scanner but now we need to initialize it and we initialize it by saying uh, scanner sc equals new scanner okay now this is kind of creating a new instance of your scanner so if I get a little bit advanced here say we had a player class okay and we wanted to initialize and use that player class within our main we would say like player P right but since player is an object we want to equal it to a new player so in theory we can have a bunch of these player objects so p1 equals new player and these would these would both be different players so that's kind of how objects work if you can kind of see it in that sense but as you can see we do get an error here and that's because in these parentheses here we need a parameter okay and a parameter base if you hover over it as you can see it needs something within these parentheses here now I'm gonna get into parameters a little bit in future tutorials or yeah not in this episode but <clears throat> what we have here is you can see all of these so file input stream path readable string all that stuff and that there has to be something in these parentheses here in order for it to actually compile and work so we're gonna be using if you hover over it as you can see we have file input stream actually it's not uh, it's not loading up right now but we need an input stream so I'm gonna say system dot in okay and that is the input stream that we're doing so it kinda makes sense in the reference that we're using the scanner to type in console something which means it's going in it's an input <clears throat> so that that kinda makes sense there so if we wanted to actually write something out all we'd have to do is say sc dot next line now this is using the dot operator okay so basically if you have a new object made <coughs> <coughs> sorry about that if you have a new object made you can actually reference what the scanner has within its class so basically here it's just a scanner it's initialized everything's good now we say sc the name of it dot and as you can see we get all of these different sort of uh, methods here that we can use and there's a bunch of them and these are all located in the scanner class that we can use now again that's somewhere in the resources but here we can use it um, we, can, we can use all of it as we'd like because we already initialized the scanner variable so I'm gonna say next line and what that allows me to do is if I play it now and I go into console as you can see now I can actually input my own text which is pretty pretty awesome um, now one thing we could do here let, let's say we wanted to print uh, type something in and then print it out on the actual count and on the actual console with a system out um, statement so what you could do technically is you could say system dot out dot print line 
cs dot next line just like that and if we if we ran it we type something in and we'll say Zach it says Zach here programmers actually don't like to use this though we don't really want to reference it because if we do this we can only reference what they what their input is one time and that's in this statement here so what programmers like to do is they like to uh, put that into a variable. So we'll say name equals sc dot next line. So now this is this is in what we ever whatever we type in here will be stored in our name variable. So now if we just type in name, it'll do the same thing. So press OK. I'll say Tim or something, and it prints out Tim. Now we this is. A lot better because now we can reference that name as many times as we want not just in the system dot out dot print line here so now that we've got all that and um, we get a warning here Java doesn't like it because we have we have an input stream that's not closed so if you just say sc dot close then it will it'll fix itself up so Zach or something and uh, there, there goes the warning that's not needed but Java just gets mad at you so I'm just gonna leave that in there so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a program or we are per se and what it is is you you type in a number 1 through 10 we'll say and the system generates a random number 1 through 10 and if you if you guess the correct number that it generated then you win if not you lost so it's kind of simple but I think it's gonna be a good practice so what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video and try and do this yourself. Now I know I am giving you a concept of random numbers generated. So if, if you can't get that part, then you can look back at this when you're done. But at least try and get like the number input and you know detecting whether or not it is good. So let's start. So first off, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say system.out dot print now I'm not gonna say print line because I want this to be on, on the same line here so I'm gonna say enter a number 1 through 10 there we go and now I'm just going to say string number equals sc dot next line and by that if we run it as you can see it's on the same it's on the same uh, line here so that's why I did print instead of print line. So now that we get the number from the user, that's pretty easy. Now we're going to generate the random number. So I'm going to make a double value because what we're, we're going to be using the math uh, functions here. And it, it requires it to be a double number. <clears throat> so I'm just going to name it random number. And I'm going to equal this to math.random. Okay, and I'm going to take out all of this for now just so I can show you just so I can show you about the random functions here or methods so I'm gonna say print line random number all right so I'm gonna run it and as you can see in the console we get this really long decimal number 0 0.539200 and it goes on if we run it again we get 0 0.6 so as you can see whoa this is random so that is pretty cool but what it's doing is it's generated a random number 0 through 1 and it's a huge random number so to fix this what we can do is to put it 0 through 10 we're gonna multiply it by 10 and just by doing that alone as you can see now we have 9.7 0 0.8 3.4 3.8 but we still have these huge decimal numbers and we don't really want that we want just a whole number. So what we can do is we can say math dot floor and put this in parentheses here. And that math dot floor will will convert it to a whole number. So it'll round up, round down, whatever it needs to do to get that to a whole number. So now as you can see we have six, eight, seven, two, seven, five, and it goes on. But let me try and get zero here. No, one, seven, eight, two. All right, you get the point. Well, this what we're do what we're doing right here actually generates a number zero through nine because this generates ten numbers and it counts zero as a number. So 
9 plus 1 is 10, and 0 is a number. So it starts 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's 10 numbers. So in order to fix this, so we want it 1 through 10, we can just add 1 to it. So now if we run it, it's going to give a number 1 through 10 no matter what. All right. So now that we've got that, we've generated the random number. We can go ahead and decomment all of this. And now all we need is a simple if statement, but it's not really that simple. And I'll show you why. So we can say if random number equals equals number. As you can see, we actually get an error here. It's because we are, we are comparing a string to a double, which we don't want. We can actually, well, because a string can actually be like characters. So like ABCs, you know, whatever, whatever it wants. It's not necessarily a number. So it can't really compare a number to letters. So in order to fix this, we can actually use a parse int. And a parse int is basically converting a string to an integer, or converting an integer to a string, or a double to a string, or you know, all of that stuff. And it's pretty easy. I'm gonna create an integer here, and I'm gonna call this number two. And it's going to equal, and this is where we're going to parse the the string uh, number that we made. So I'm gonna say integer dot parse int. As you can see, it kind of pops up for you, parse int. And in here, we're going to say number. So that's what we want to convert. So this method right here will convert uh, our string here into an integer and it's stored in the number two. So now if we say random number equals equals number two, we can do that because a double and, and an integer can, uh, you can do an if statement with that. So in this case, if random number equals equals number two, which means you got it right. We can say system dot out dot print line. Uh, we'll, we'll say number plus equals plus random number plus you win. There we go. And now we can say simple else statement here. And we'll just say does not equal you lose. So let's run it. I'll say five, that'll be my guess. Five does not equal four, so you lose. Um, now we do have that point o there. If, if you don't like that, we can we're gonna I'm gonna introduce a casting system in the next tutorial so we actually don't get that. But let's try again. So I'll say two. 2 does not equal 9. So out here, I'm just going to bring the number down just a little bit here. So 5. So it'll be a number 1 through 5. I'll say 3. Uh, if I can win here to show you. 2. Ah, here we go. So 2 equals 2. You win. So there you go. Go and leave a like. Go and subscribe. A little bit of longer tutorials. Hopefully you guys like that. And next tutorial, we will be getting into some awesome stuff. So I will see you guys next time. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.